Gabayan. Nako na wala. Tingnan mo. Bibi, ano yun mga ito, Bibi? Ito na, lagay. Got it. Ayan. Uh, Panginoon, gabayan niyo po kami sa araw na ito sa ginagawang webinar. Ah. Kung ano man po ang uh, tawag dito, uh, pag-usapan, pagkasundoan, sana po ay palagi niyo kaming gabayan sa lahat ng oras Aming mga pamilya, mga kasama sa trabaho, sa Roland, sa lahat ng namumuno, kami po ay gabayan niyo po sa lahat ng panahon. Dahil ito pong ginagawa namin ay para rin po sa aming mga kasamahan sa trabaho. Kaya po, ako po ay may mati, mataimtim na nanalangin na ang gabay po ninyo ay bigay niya sa amin. Maraming maraming salamat po. Amen. Maraming salamat. Uh, maraming salamat Pangulong Lupe sa inyong dasal para sa ating activity ngayong hapon na ito. At ay papasalamat tayo sa magandang panahon. Uh, magandang signal sa ating mga internet connections na hindi tayo mapuputol. No? Uh, before we start and before we formally start the presentations and the sem lectures, I would like to acknowledge those who are present today. No? Formally acknowledge. First, I would like to acknowledge our speaker, uh, Dr. Uh, Leda Selis, uh, our uh, uh, Nakusip. Education Research Liaison. She she has a uh, doctorate degree with her and a season lecturer. She is also the economic professor of Sterling de la Cruz at uh, University of Saint Lazal. <laughs> okay, thank you, uh, Dr. Aleda, for being with us today. Next, I would like to also to introduce to you and acknowledge the presence of Sister Ling de la Cruz, our UNI PLC Women's uh, President. Uh, magandang hapon, Sister Ling. Magandang hapon po sa lahat. May hapon sa tanan. Maayong hapon sa inyo. Thank you for being with us today. Also acknowledge the presence of Sister Mitch Michelle Bellino of Uni Network International Global Union, Asia Pacific. Good afternoon, Sister Mitch. Good afternoon, Sir Roland. Sorry, Good afternoon po sa lahat. Okay, thank you. We would like also to acknowledge the presence of our uh, guest from National Union of Bank Employees, the incoming National President of Nube, Brother Rainier Cruz. Magandang hapon sa inyo lahat. Magandang hapon, Brother Rainier. Also, Maraming like to... salamat sa, sa invitasyon. Of course, and we are honored uh, na you are part of this program this afternoon, despite your be, be, very busy schedule. No, inacknowledge din natin yung ating Vice President for Luzon, Kara Monoheda. Si Ayan, Kara Mon, magandang hapon. Magandang hapon po okay. sa lahat. Acknowledge din natin si Brother Ryan Baynosa from Karsumco, way up north, no? Magandang hapon, Brother Brian, Brother Ryan. Good afternoon. <laughs> Knowledge din natin yung presence ni Pangulang Lorna Garcia, isang batikang babaeng labor leader from Batangas, URC, Universal Rubina Sugar and Renewables. Magandang hapon, Pangulang Lorna. Nakamute po kayo. Sige mamaya kasi magsisharing po kayo mamaya. Acknowledge natin si Pangulong Isabelo Sibulo from Ceres Transport, Batangas. Magandang hapon, Pangulong Sibulo. Acknowledge din natin si Brother Rogelio Loreto ng Best Tank. Pwede po kayong maghingi sa kanya ng tanke ng tubig. 
Ngayon po. po. Acknowledge natin si ating uh, National Deputy General Secretary, Sister Emily Ledesma. Ngayon po. po. Acknowledge din natin si Sister Josefina Lim, yung CIO Vice President for Mindanao. I'd like to acknowledge also our national treasurer. Ayun, may papamerienda. O baka magpaparaffle si Sister Nena ng cash. Sa GCash, pwede na, Ma'am Nena. Padala mo na lang. Magandang hapon, Sister Nena. Naka-mute naka po kayo. Okay. We would like also to acknowledge uh, Attorney Brian Perez, our legal counsel. Ayan, Lenning Lenny, oh, Alliance of Labor Lenny, uh, Labor Leaders for Lenny. Okay, good afternoon. So acknowledge, uh, acknowledge uh, the presence of Sister Tricia Kate Radam. Also, Sister Anna Milim. Uh, Brother Edwin Kadaganan from UWA, Nakusip, CIO. Also acknowledge the presence of Brother Gilbert Maxion, yung presidente ng Best Tank, kasama ni Brother Rogelio. Mag Magpaparaffle daw sila mamaya ng tanke, ng tubig. Okay? Mr. Nito. Magandang hapon, Pangulo. Magandang hapon, Pangulo din, kay Brother Noel Ramos ng Hawaiian Philippine Sugar Workers Union. Also, good afternoon to and acknowledge the presence of Sister Estela Bagon from Republic Cement. Si Sister Estela ay magpaparapol din ng cemento sa atin. No? Dito rin si Sister Irene Lendio, Brother Jeff Cabatingan, and yours truly, Brother Roland De La Cruz. So, uh, dito na rin. No? Acknowledge ko rin yung pagdating ng Pangulo natin sa La Carlota URC Sugar Mill, Brother Nesty Catalan. Welcome, Brother Nesty. Okay, we... Okay, so... Sister Leda, are you, are you ready for your presentation? Okay. Sige. Okay, but before we proceed, no, I uh, would like to seek your indulgence for a one minute of prayer for the repose of soul, soul of Sister uh, Tita Flor Kabatingan, who we celebrated her death anniversary yesterday. Okay, so to formally start the lecture, I would like to give the floor to Doc Leda Celis for the first part of our program, Trade Union Leadership Webinar for Leaders and Officers of Nakusip CIO, PASIO, and FLO. Take the floor. Kau na po, uh, Doc Leda Celis, you have the floor. Thank you. Po, uh, magandang hapon po sa lahat. Uh, this will be a uh, ano siguro, uh, tag lead, no? because most of the terms that I'm uh, using are basically in English. Okay, and the statistics of that. So it's hard to explain in, in Tagalog. Uh, okay, see you guys. So the, I would like to start uh, with the framework of this lecture. I will uh, start with the legal framework of the very basis for uh, uh, workers' protection. Then I will go into the description of what the labor market is all about. Uh, it's like the pro-COVID and the uh, after COVID. Then the implication of that to the Philippine economy and the labor sector, the trade unions in general. Okay. And uh, what have been the reaction of the trade unions? Uh, with regards to pandemic, what leadership qualities would be you know, sufficient 
to counter uh, times of crisis, especially pandemic, and it will end up with a challenge to trade union leaders, not to all of you, as to how do we react, okay? See you <clears throat> Okay, I will begin with this. This is the, a saying that's a, you know, is a telling all of the leaders that before you become a leader, success is all about growing yourself. After you become a leader, success is about growing others, which simply means that before you can become an effective leader, you should empower yourself first. You cannot give what you do not have. In short, you cannot empower others when you are not empowered yourself. So this is a chance. You no know, learning is from womb to tomb. Okay, so be like a sponge. Anything that you uh, learn from training, from all sorts of uh, exposures, take it, you no, know, because it will empower you. Okay, see it. So let us let me start with the legal framework here. Uh, in uh, you know referring to workers protection. And this one is the enumeration um, I have here. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, anything? Okay. So we'll yeah. have. Mr. Leda, you may unmute yourself. Like oh. auto mute, kasi. Okay. Okay, it's okay. Okay, legal framework. I enumerated several uh, laws and policies here, uh, which are protecting the workers. The 1987 constitution, later I have a detail of what are this is all about. The labor code of the Philippines or the PD442, the civil code, jurisprudence, ILO conventions, 87 and 98, which are very important and the policies, programs, and good practices. Okay. What I will concentrate lang doon sa Consti, Labor Code, okay, and some ILO conventions. Okay. So, this is to reiterate that, uh, you know, uh, workers' protection is not something that we should uh, struggle to win, okay? It is stipulated in the law, and therefore everybody is entitled to it. Okay, it is a privilege. So, according to Article 13 of the 1987 Constitution, the state shall afford full protection to labor, local and overseas, organized and unorganized, promote full employment opportunities for all. Okay, so to be specific, the 1987 Constitution allows us to be organized, be it local or overseas, okay? And this will include the unorganized sector, okay? Or the unorganized workers. And it also promotes full employment and equality of employment opportunities for all. The rights of workers to self-organization, to concerted activities. So strike is not illegal unless you meet all the, you know, you did not meet all the requirements of the law. Security of tenure, Humane conditions of work, living wage, participate in Okay, recognition of the right of labor to just share fruits of production. That's why we have productivity bonus. Okay, and then right of enterprises to reasonable return of investment. This is now the protection given to the employer. So therefore, your Article 13 of the 1987 Constitution affirms not only protection to workers, but likewise the employers, which is the source of capital or investment. Okay, and your labor code, okay, which is also the very source of the 
you know, protection for workers is the RE6715, okay? Which promotes free collective bargaining negotiations, voluntary arbitration, mediation, conciliation, free trade unionism, free and voluntary organization of a strong and united labor movement, enlightenment of workers concerning their rights, provide adequate administrative machinery, okay, for the expeditious settlement, okay? So basically, Philippines has a lot of laws, no, a lot of laws. And uh, if only we, you know, employers or all sectors would be able to uh, implement and follow, okay? I don't think there will be labor regression, no? in this uh, particular country. Okay, uh, so far when it comes to ILO ratified conventions, we have so far 38 ratified uh, conventions no? uh, for the ILO, but I will only concentrate on the very important, which is the ILO convention nine, number 87, which is freedom of association and protection of the right to organize convention, okay? Then we have the LO convention number 98, which is the, the right to collective bargaining. Then we have the LO convention number 144, which is the tripartite consultation. And the, the number 151, which is for the public service. And the rest are basically documentation of, you know, visits, uh, bargaining convention, okay? and observations they done by the experts of the ILO here in the Philippines. Okay. So here is the Philippine model of the trade union and the collective bargaining cycle. So we start with a union formation, okay? Then union recognition through your uh, certification election. Then after that, we have the CBA negotiation conclusion. This is one uh, area where I want to really write a book on uh, you know, how to help or guide workers on uh, the bargaining, you know, you know, bargaining of uh, the demands of workers with justification, including economics, accounting. You no, know? I'm, I'm really dreaming of uh, finishing that book, okay? and then uh, share it with the worker sector. Then the, you have the CBA administration, then renegotiation after uh, uh, some time for the economic provision, okay? And so it becomes a cycle. And I think all of you are familiar with this. Okay, so now we go to the Philippine labor market updates, okay? But you know, when you are a leader, it's very hard to, to help, to advise, to... Uh, you know, uh, recommend policies when you yourself does not know of anything that is happening in your country. So I, you know, I deem it right to somehow share, okay, uh, information of what the Philippine labor market is all about. Okay. So I will begin with the pro-COVID uh, scenario, okay, here. So you have here, uh, so COVID started uh, December 2019, and the impact to the worker sector, we felt it by uh, 20s, 2020s, 2021, up to the present. No? Although they said that uh, currently we are feeling the, you know, the, the state or the country is trying to be normalized, but it's not the case, no? because statistics would say otherwise. Okay, so here, what do we have? Okay, percent distribution of underemployed persons. Okay, so you, I think you're familiar with the term unemployed, employed, underemployed. Okay, so when you say employed, okay, the labor force, okay, who are working, and basically we're referring to the formal sector. Unemployed, these are the part of the labor force, okay without work and not earning salary, but take note, huh? take note there is a scientific definition of the unemployed now as per recommended by the ILO. Because when you say unemployed, 
meaning these are the members of the labor force who are not currently working, but is actively looking for work. So meaning, if you are unemployed, you are not looking for work, okay? The term for you is discouraged workers. You stop looking for work because simply you're discouraged. And when the, when the term discouraged, the ILO said, you are not anymore part of the unemployed, okay? So when, when you, you see their statistics, okay, unemployed could be minimal, but does not include the discouraged workers. If you look at, again, the statistics of the discouraged or workers, you'll be, you know, uh, uh, dismayed. Why? Okay, a lot, millions of Filipinos are discouraged workers, okay? In figure, this is one area where the government should focus on. Okay. So this is the underemployed. You are working, but the number of hours uh, is not enough. So if there are 40 hours in a week, you only work for 20 hours, you are considered as underemployed. So two school of thoughts for your underemployed uh, definition. And then the other one, it could be referring to the seasonal worker, like the sugar industry. The sugar industry has a uh, off milling and then milling season. So also considered as underemployed because, because there is a period where you don't have work. Okay, another school of thought for the underemployed is your job mismatch. You were trained to become, uh, let's say, engineer, okay? Yet you work as a nanny or you work in the department store. You were trained as a nurse, you are working in the call center, okay? I am trained as a uh, professor and I work as a sales girl. So literally we call that job mismatch. You were, you're working in a profession that was not your training, okay? So that is uh, job mismatch and that is also classified under underemployed, okay? So by April, 2019, okay? The biggest underemployed are the services sector, the agriculture industry. Okay, so the so service sector could be siguro, uh, well, well, contractual, contractual, but siguro limited number of hours. Agriculture, because I'm referring to the seasonal workers, industry, uh, Again, no. When, when there's deficiency in the number of hours, when supposedly you are working eight hours and you work less than that, you are considered as underemployed. Okay. On the next uh, diagram here, you have percent distribution of employed persons by major occupation. Okay. So those uh, employed. Okay. In April 2019, uh, mostly are coming from the elementary occupations. Learning elementary occupations is our occupations which do not need uh, vital training. No? So followed by the service sector, followed by the agricultural forestry managers, okay? And those at the top, okay, are the armed forces occupations. Okay, sige. Kumbaga, maliit lang yung pupunta dun sa armed forces na work na yan. Okay, technicians and associate professionals, also 4.2 because literally, you need to have skills in order to be uh, part of that particular group. Okay, so again, this one. Before the, the COVID, okay, there are also turnover rates, no? but the numbers are not that much. Okay, so you have uh, accession, we have separation, and then labor turnover. Okay, so you have three, three types of the turnover rates. Okay, and later we'll see the reasons why were they, uh, the reason for the turnover. Okay, and then separate rates in agricultural and non-agricultural establishments in the Philippines. Okay, so you have here employee initiated, the, the gray one. Okay, 
and the employer initiated. No, when you say employee initiated, could be, you know, uh, probably the employee resigned on its own, no, voluntarily, while the employer initiated is due to several factors. Okay, uh, it could be that uh, there is no job available for you, redundancy. Okay, that's why it's employer initiated. And then what do we have here? In terms of uh, the labor sector, okay. So comparative, we have 2016 and 2014, okay. So 2014, we have 35,209, okay. Uh, establishments with went down by basically if this particular diagram shows that there has been a decline in uh, you know in union membership even before the covid-19 okay so number of cbas by regions so of course the 682 is uh, representing the entire country okay uh, the the ncr because this is where the bulk of the businesses is. And then followed by three, okay? And then uh, 4A, okay, 11, seven. Okay, and the rest are, ni mga gagma. itong malilit na to, no? Okay, this represents that uh, no progress in uh, CBAs, no? The, the, the conclusion of CBAs in this region, okay. And then the number of CBA uh, workers coverage per region, NCR again, okay, in uh, view of this. So, kumbaga, nag-swak nag -swak lang silang dalawa. Okay, so 142, then followed by basically the same uh, regions. Okay, then you have, uh, this one is represented by a letter. So, let the letter represent the sector. So, in this case, the A is agriculture, but what is the highest here is D, which means that uh, collective bargaining is higher in electricity, gas team, air conditioning supply, followed by uh, mining and quarrying, and um, E, water supply, several rates, okay, and the rest. Okay, yeah, see, I, I'm providing a copy of this uh, lecture to Ro Brother Roland. So, uh, okay, then trend in unionization rate, okay, pro COVID. So, the blue uh, bars represent the unionization rate. So, you notice the declining, no? the declining trend uh, among the unionization okay the the density of unions but uh, here the line the 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 line graph representing the union members is increasing okay although the the the, the, the decline or the decrease in uh, uh, unionization rate is uh, you know um, confirmed by the data that i previously shown you okay so yeah the union density, again, the highest was uh, the same, no? like in the data I showed you a while ago. In uh, electricity, followed by mining, okay, and by E, water supply. Okay. Registered CBAs by uh, type. Okay. So for the first time, CBA registration, we have 14.4%. Okay, or the biggest here is uh, CBA renewals. No, the CBA has been there for a long time. And then after five years expiration date, to just renew whatever the, the process is. No? It's either voluntary recognition or you undergo again the, the certification election and then you win. And so the same process. And then you have the supplemental, no? because we have a policy under the labor code that after three years, you can renegotiate for the economic provision. So you have 12.2% uh, there. 
And the other diagram here, registered CBAs by scope. Okay. So here, the orange is rank and file, which means that basically 95% of the CBA is registered with the Department of Labor or you know, the product of the unionization of the rank and file. And the supervisory is only 4.9%. Okay, see again. So registered CBA is by sector, industry, Okay, industry, we're talking of uh, factories, manufacturing. Okay, because basically manufacturing, we have uh, plenty of manpower followed by the service sector. Okay, you know what services are, hospitals, insurance, uh, you have the hotels, you have the damu lang, no? Dami. But the not, now, what I want to see here, of course, is the trade unions representing the BPOs because BPOs are proliferating in the country now, but seldom we can see the presence of unions in those. Then agriculture, 2.1%. Okay, very few registered CBAs uh, representing the agriculture. Then here, for the male, female, okay, uh, male represent 53.0%, uh, which is, of course, no, we compared to the pink, 53 versus 47.0. So this is one area also where if this is a women's month, we would like to lobby that, you know, um, special provisions for, for uh, women, okay, or CBA provisions that would benefit women should be handled, okay, with care and a focal person should be assigned to its union so that these things can be reversed, okay? The, the pink one now greater than the blue one. Okay, see again. And this one, um, percent distribution of registered CBAs by union status, okay, affiliated unions, 57.4%, independent, Unions, 42.6%, okay? I think you're all familiar with the status of unions, no? Affiliated and then independent, okay? And here, person share of top five registered CBAs by major industry, okay? The, this one, I think this is in conformity with I have shown you, uh, manufacturing leads the, the unionized, no? The most unionized sector. So in this case, you have, 56.8%, followed by the transportation, followed by the wholesale and retail, and accommodation, food service activities, and uh, the last among the top five, um, agriculture. Okay. Okay. So prior to COVID, these are the reasons for the turnover. Okay, according to the employer, it's a completion of projects. So, you know, uh, projects are fixed term contracts. So when the project is done, there's no use for you to continue. So the employer will just, okay, remove you. And then absence without leave, so a wool, I wonder, you know. Uh, reorganization, downsizing, retirement, terminated, Okay, either with just cost or authorized cost, merger chains in management, performance issues, maybe you are not meeting the required standards of the company, lack of market, okay, probably for the, the company itself, no? You know, when, when the products are not selling anymore, okay, using the management prerogative, the company has the right to hire and fire, okay? So redundancy. And then others. And then reasons for employee initiated. The other side here, there is not a, a employer initiated. But according to the Dole, there are also employee initiated. And, uh, and most of the reasons are well, ito na, hired by another company, especially if you're talking of uh, uh, you know, millennials, BPOs, BPO workers. They don't stay in one company, any small, uh, they, they go away and then look for greener pasture. 
Then family consideration, work abroad, resignation, absence without leave, retirement, personal issues, study, health reasons, and then others. Okay. So if you look at this, no, this is not mentioning the trade union uh, uh, setup. So this is in general, okay. In the non-agricultural sector, women comprise of the following percentage of the labor force. Okay, so if you're talking of 100%, meaning 100% minus 39.4, because the, the difference of that would be we men, uh, men, no? the, the share of men. Okay, so look at the trend here. So it started, with, but there was a, the, the time and uh, increase then Shia is in, in here, 42 only. It did not exceed 42, okay? Meaning, you know, the share of wage, uh, employment of women have not uh, taken off that much. Konti lang, pasok sa, sa labor market. Okay. Next, this one, by age, okay? So we have, <coughs> if you look at the pink, you know, the focus on the pink, okay? Because the uh, darker is the men. Okay, so 15 to 24, those are your millennials. The uh, 25 to 34, also like after college, na trabajo. Okay, so somehow the biggest among women is in the 25 to 34. And consider this as the, you know, women graduating from college and then trying to find work. While the 15 and 24, could be <coughs> but partly, partly in college, partly <coughs> a uh, drop out figure, partly uh, not finishing school. Okay. And then 35 to 44, those are the 35 to 44, 45 to 54, those are basically the, na, the we call it the permanent type of uh, employment among women no? with 8.9 and 7.4 and then 55 to 64 and tell them no you can find the uh, women employed after retirement so that's why you have only 2.0 okay <clears throat> okay see again if you look at the gender wage gap between men and women okay this is in 2017. So this was pre-COVID, okay? So later, Jing later will explain if there are changes on this, no? because Jing will, will tell us inequality, uh, you know, uh, after the COVID and uh, how is it with the trade union? <coughs> okay, so with managers, there's a discrepancy of negative 5.3, okay, for men and women. For uh, all occupations, negative 5.3, okay. So then you have managers, okay. We look at the one ng day, dito, yung malalaking figures. No? We were taught that how to analyze the table is just focus on the extremes. The extremes could be the highest and the lowest, okay. And the... Uh, I, I, I did it dito, so armed forces occupations, I cannot explain why women are paid more compared to men in the armed forces uh, occupations. I, I don't know the reason to this. Okay. And then you have uh, followed by the skilled agricultural workers. Okay. So women are paid higher. Okay. I'm going to explain it all later in no? Why? And then, uh, what else? By elementary occupations. <clears throat> elementary, these are the basic uh, type of jobs. No? Which does not need the further training mga scientific skills. So it has a 23.5 uh, gender wage gap. Okay, see ya. I proceed. Okay. So what is the impact? of pandemic to the Philippine economy and the workers' rights to organize and, collect and bargain collectively. Okay, so let me show you, no? Uh, because as I said, the pandemic hit 
the country uh, December 2019 and we felt the impact around April May so this was evidence dito in 2020 quarter 2 ito yung uh, grabbing ano no uh, impact sa economy and even our gross domestic product okay uh, deep down by negative 8.3 okay so it's not only the gdp that was affected but likewise all all no, contributing factors to the so called gdp okay gdp is a uh, consumption plus investments plus government spending plus uh, exports minus imports that's the formula no for computing the gdp okay and salaries employment investments included in the counting of the gdp so here so ito yung evidence na talagang affected including labor and we're talking of the Philippines. Look at the black line because this is representing Philippines. Okay. Now, I'm not affected really with uh, Vietnam and uh, Singapore was also affected there, the yellow. No, Malaysia almost equal to the fate of the Philippines. And then Thailand also. Vietnam man talaga yung hindi masyado no ito sa tatas okay so how does covid affect the world of work okay so quantity of jobs quantity ibig sabihin ang volume of jobs were affected both okay it produced unemployment and underemployment so ibig sabihin po okay unemployment went up Underemployment went up. Okay, the quality of work, wages, and access to social protection, okay, became uh, problematic. Okay, to be sabihin, there was even a time that we have to compromise now uh, with the uh, salaries of workers. Like a lot of unions have to compromise with the management that it's better to to receive less than to have nothing. Okay, and this is the example of the. Uh, you know, compromise in terms of wages. So the quality of work was also compromised. No? So come before uh, you are into a type of work where it gives you higher salary, at the time of COVID, you cannot complain anymore. Any work will do. And then uh, effects on the specific groups who are more vulnerable to adverse labor market outcomes, such as your women, PWDs, and uh, probably the older uh, generation okay so the these are the scenarios after the covid okay so a global economy so it's not only philippines so the entire global economy has been struggling okay to recover okay because of the covid 19 and it has a profound impact in the world of work in the first half of 2020, okay? And the recovery could be further delayed due to the late attack, okay? Wala, hindi pa natapos yung first wave, may second wave, may third wave. So, you know, adding insult to injury. And then globally, the most vulnerable among the workers were regular, temporary or casual workers, self-employed, you know, those workers who have no security of tenure. So when you don't have that, any time, you know, they can be... Uh, terminated by the employer. Okay, so look at the after COVID scenario here. Okay, underemployment. Okay, so after COVID, it went up by 20.9, the highest, no? As of 2021, okay? And, uh, and, uh, Unemployment, which is the blue line, okay, went up, okay, by April 2020. This was, uh, ito yung kanina sa inyo, na yung how the GDP was affected. And then it follows since 
uh, investments, uh, workers comprise of the you know income part of your GDP, okay, or the total activity of the economy. So it follows na it affected also the entire labor sector, okay. And then, okay, in July 2021, the labor force, okay, uh, was only 61.9%. Okay, uh, labor force participation rate, uh, 65. Okay, employment rate, 45. Okay, or 92. Okay, that's unemployed, unemployed. Uh, uh, or unemployment rate here, said the uh, six point nine percent, okay, and then underemployment fourteen point two. But this was already twenty twenty one. No, uh, if you could see the underemployed in the twenty twenty, the figures were very very high, okay. Oh, look at this, labor force participation rate. What is this? No. We are referring to, when you say labor force, 15, minimum of 15 uh, years of age to 65 years old, okay? Uh, out there looking for work or working. So we call that the, the labor force. Okay, next, uh, April 20, okay? This was uh, the, the figures here. No, the, the deep in the figures are coinciding. Coinciding the coinciding the figures I previously showed you. No, nag deep siya, meaning bumaba ng masyado. And then uh, after the the COVID, let us see the reasons now. This is employee initiated. Ano namang reason nila? na wala na silang trabaho. Retirement, because some were uh, asked to voluntarily resign or retired, okay? Um, for those who are nearing the retirement age, they, you know, they like receive an offer from a company to just retire. Even those that are not nearly retirement age, they just grab the opportunity because of the virus. No, when there's no definite uh, date as to when the virus will be over, retirement is the best, uh, best option. Resignation, okay? Personal issues, hired by another company, family considerations due to COVID-19. Ito, rapa -rapa na. 2,876. Due to COVID-19, figure the the result here would be, you no, know, the the company was affected. The company shut down operations. Okay, so no choice but to lay off people. Okay, kung baga, uh, when the company closes down, no choice. No, goes along with it are the people who are working with the company, and then to study health issues. Okay, to work abroad. And then others. So the highest here would be resignation. Resignation. Okay. So it, it simply means that during COVID, a lot, okay, resigned from their work. Okay. Next. Okay. Percent distribution of employed person. This is a comparative. Okay. So before COVID. Okay, employed persons were 41, and then the after the COVID is 33,830. So it simply shows that the statistics were correct, no? Because there was a decline by uh, how many units here? In thousands. Okay. Also, the, the part-time workers affected. Um, some working less than 20 hours working at in between 20 to 29 hours and working 30 to 39 hours, okay? So before, ang taas, no? And then after the COVID, bumaba ng masyado. So this is a very clear evidence of how COVID has affected the workers, okay? According to the employer, after COVID, ito naman yung rason ng employer. 
because the business conditions are not good ito yung alibay ng ano no ng employer so basically magkikita naman natin we, we give them the benefit of the doubt that uh, indeed businesses were affected by the covid so this was the, the declared reason 167941 project completion because project based retrenchment 61 due to covid 19 pandemic 13 lack of market 4609 reorganization 2881 mergers change in management closing or cessation financial loss and others okay i think the we will uh, give a benefit to the data information okay next to this okay percent distribution of employees who quit their jobs by reasons in the ncr only okay what are the major reasons for the employees or workers working in the ncr personal issues hard by another company family considerations due to covid the the violet here you know? and then to study health issues and then to work abroad okay see again you look at this comparative 2019 2020 2021 so we look at the january only okay the data in january 2021 is available so 60.3 labor force participation rate Okay, then it went up, went up by uh, January 2020 because uh, we were affected, as I said, in the April, April sa. So from 61.7 in April, it went down to 55.7, and then 2021 it went up again because the government claims everything is uh, you know normalized. Okay, the youth. Look at this, okay? January thirty-five, twenty, okay? It went down to thirty-two point four, then went up again. Male seventy-three, then seventy-four, but went down by sixty-nine point eight, okay? And then seventy-three point nine, okay? Female forty-six point six. Then went up to forty-eight point four, but went down. Well, very big ang figure niya. Okay, forty-one point five. Okay, and then went up again. Okay, the reason why here from forty-one again, no, na restore siya to forty-eight point five because when men are out of jobs, it's normally the housewives who are sent to the labor market to find jobs. That's why you find a very high. Uh, Employment rate here for women for July, 2020. Okay, so for the the sectoral agriculture, okay, two years only, April 2019 for the total, it went down to 33. So ang laki po ng ano 65.3 for the full time, no, ay yung bawas. And then from nine to agriculture to eight seven four three. The industry from eight, uh, tignan yon, naging five, five, seven, four, four na lang, okay? And then services from twenty-four, naging nineteen. So it clearly shows how its uh, sector of the economy was affected, okay, by the COVID. Okay, sige. So here, um, twenty twenty-one, twenty twenty, and twenty twenty-one. You have the labor force participation again. It went up. Okay, when you say labor force, now it includes employed and unemployed. Okay, again, uh, take note: ah, uh, unemployed but is looking for work because if it's not, if the person is not looking for work, that person is not part of the labor force. Okay, so we we take into consideration those two persons, two type of persons that I mentioned. So working for work, looking for work, and working—that's why it's higher because this includes the unemployed. But the employed are the blue. So no, so it's natural no, that the labor force should be higher than the employed sector. Underemployed in red, okay. So you have there no 
and it's decreasing by uh, no? decreasing from April 2021, decreased job by 3.73, and then went up again by 0.3. Okay. So total sector, as you can see here, service sector, 57, okay, for the employed. And then industry, the blue, 18.2, okay. Then it went up to 18.4. So there's a uh, improvement, except the agricultural sector, which is a decline in around 0.6, okay, here from uh, 2021, April 2021 to May 2021 to June 2021. So basically, these are the latest uh, figures issued by the dollar. Okay, so this one, top five major industries with the largest increase in employment. This is after COVID now, and we can see the highest here is uh, uh, wholesale and retail, followed by agriculture and forestry. Okay, so yeah. Because uh, the economy, as they said, is returning to its normal uh, operation. So these are the basically the indicators, okay? And look at this, top, top uh, five major industries with largest drop in employment, meaning, okay, the industries with, uh, with less people now, okay? And it's a uh, government, okay? Uh, the transport sector, I think you can relate to this, okay? Government, transport sector, and other service activities. Okay, sige. Uh, for this one, what are the reasons for not working or for the workers working less than 40 hours? Okay. Reasons for working for more than 48 hours because they want to, to earn more. Uh, it's a requirement of the job exceptional uh, week, ambition, passion for job, ECQ, okay? Sometimes ito yung, ito yung ECQ sa research namin. So like when there's a uh, lockdown, uh, instead of the eight hour uh, requirement for every worker, the management has the tendency to, to uh, what do you call this? Increase na, no? So it's like from eight hours, increase the number of, work, of hours to 16 hours. So that uh, there will be lesser movement on the part of the workers and the in and out ingress, egress in the company itself. Umbaga, uh, lesser people involved in work. That's why they have to, instead of uh, the having a duty for eight hours, okay, they increase it or double it, okay. And then reason for working less than 40 hours, variable working time or the nature of work, holidays for business conditions, reduction in clients work, low or, low or off season, bad weather, strike or labor dispute, okay? Start or end of change, a change of job, could only find part-time work, school training, personal, family reasons, health, medical, SEQ, lockdown. So if you notice here, no? So this was what I was telling you that a lot of workers have compromised now, have compromised their hours of work. So instead of working eight hours a day, they settled for like four hours in order to just, you know, earn something for the family rather than uh, not doing anything at all and not earning at all. Okay, that's why you have 63.8 here. Okay. Identified effect of coronavirus or the COVID-19 to daily operations. Okay, what does the impact of COVID to the companies? Decrease in sales, reduced operation, temporary closure, limited client, lack of public transportation, reduction of workforce, disrupted operations, financial income loss, lack of manpower, increased operating costs, delayed deliveries, limited transactions, and others. So, in other words, no, it's not only the company that is affected, but likewise the workers working in that company. Okay, see Then what were the coping mechanisms of the establishments to deal with the impact of COVID? So alternative, many companies came up with alternative work arrangements, 
okay? Like a uh, work from home, like a uh, new uh, setup, number of hours, okay? Implemented follow health and safety protocols, provided a shuttle service, implemented new online system, uh, provision of health safety essentials, provision of financial support assistance, cut down salary of staff, and then others. Okay. Impact on trade unions. So ito na, dahil ito kayo. Okay. Smaller membership. Okay. Especially if talking of, uh, you know, uh, nakikita, nakita po natin no? na maliliit uh, yung, yung uh, trade union density in the figures that I, or statistics that I presented to you. And then uh, the dagdagan pa ng nandito na yung COVID, okay, where a lot of workers resigned, um, you know, work from home setup or a lot, okay. So therefore affecting the number of workers in a company. So therefore, what does the effect on the union? Unions now have smaller membership, okay. And because of smaller membership, it also means smaller union dues. Okay, increased cost to recruit, bargain, and service membership because we cannot do it face to face anymore. Okay, simply uh, we need to have you know access to IT. Okay, in order to organize, and then weakening of the bargaining power. Okay, I think all of you uh, would agree, unless we have a very strong union. Okay, decline in attractiveness of unions as increasingly they become unable to protect and advance the workers' interests, okay? With the COVID-19, you know, unions of, uh, of uh, the unions, uh, what do you call it? Uh, being famous has been affected. The, the concern of the workers here is survival. Survival of the fittest. It's not anymore joining the unions, okay? And then uh, bargaining in public sector gets tougher. Further decline of trade unions as government advance the rights of states. Union harassment, not defended. Okay, state not initiate actions on unions' behalf because we are like, you know, our mind is so preoccupied with the impact of COVID. And then how can the union help? You know, it's a lot like a month later, it's a good, um, you know, thing to think of. Okay, then implications of pandemic. Okay. Pandemic has affected both men and women members, but intensifying gender inequality with women bearing the brunt of triple loads or triple loads, being a homemaker, a worker, and a union member. Okay, so we have been uh, uh, even in the research that we had a long, long time ago. This has been, uh, you know, uh, these findings have been coming up. Okay, the triple road. That's why we are lobbying for the care pay, you know, the, the care services that women are extending to the families should be subjected to pay. Erosion, union membership means less workers are covered by unions, okay? No union members means no income, lack of funds to support the members' needs, okay? So if you have uh, members who are affected by COVID and the union have no funds, you know, how do you think we can help the, the member? No union means higher inequality among workers, especially among women, okay? Cost waves, stagnation, but when unions are strong, they can bargain for higher pay and benefits. Then limited access to internet, inability to organize members and to hold meetings have negative but insignificant effects on membership because we cannot anymore hold hold face-to-face -face meetings. We cannot hear their grievance. We cannot hear their problems. We have to be contented with access to IT in which many unions do not have. Okay. So these are additional uh, concern for trade unions. No? Trade union is killed, new killings, red tagging, arrest and detention, forced disaffiliation cases. Okay. So additional pa other than the COVID. Okay. Okay. I have here uh, documentation of how trade unions were able to, you know, uh, defend themselves or able to stood up, to stand uh, amidst the impact of pandemic. Okay, some of this might be you might be doing some of these uh, strategies. Some do not have idea 
but I'm bringing this up because these are the aids of pandemic and the direction of the economy and the trade union uh, operation as well. It's like we have no choice but to face the realities. Okay. So initiatives, okay. So public policies and employers action in dealing with the challenges. So it's basically trade union play a uh, crucial role in lobbying for the policies with the government to uh, counter you know, some uh, anti-worker policies by employers and the government. And then uh, social dialogues, the use of social dialogues. Okay, trade unions also played an active role in humanitarian issues, okay? Like uh, uh, humanitarian aid, observe lockdown and restrictive measures, uh, advisory services to members, and uh, ito yung last ang gustong gusto ko, unions represented workers who were threatened to be laid off from jobs. So, so just like telling your employer, wait, wag, wag muna. No? Do not touch the, the members. Okay. And then uh, uh, sought to access social protection due to pandemic. Okay. More pa, lobbied for sustainable social protection policies such as health insurance. No, uh, a lot in our research it came up that uh, workers who uh, were you know afflicted afflicted with COVID were uh, because of the exhaustion of the special leaves in the CBA, uh, they were marked absent. So con absent, no work, no pay. So this is one area where unions should come in. Okay. So we, we, we lobby for like a special leaves for COVID cases other than the special leaves we enjoyed from the CBA. Okay, then competent inspectors right to enter workplaces for risk identification. Okay, and this is, uh, we lobby this with the Department of Labor. Make members better acquainted with digital technologies because we cannot hold any more face-to-face. -face. So like virtual meetings, um, uh, announcements, uh, what else? Like uh, advices using online platforms. Receive support from local and international orgs. Conducted virtual meetings during the pandemic. Recruitment with the use of social media. And then alliance with the government and NGOs to get more support. Okay, so like we did, we did uh, especially the last one. Huh? Collaborate with the uh, NGOs and then government for... Uh, subsidies in order to be given to the workers, especially those affected with virus. And then, uh, uh, hey. I don't know. <laughs> Anyway, some of the things here were basically how the union handled the COVID-19. These are the strategies. As I said, if you are not uh, adopting this, this could really be a big help to you, you know, uh, as a trade union, because this will guide you on what to do. Okay. So uh, the, the, the question here, as a trade union leader, are you prepared to handle today's challenges? So I'm recommending... Okay, the leadership style that you will have to adopt. Okay, uh, I, I have to wrap up because <laughs> the next speaker is already there, but I'm recommending that it should be a leader with a vision. Okay, a leadership who sees possibilities amid uh, adversities. Okay, a leader who inspires trust. Okay, a leader who seeks new strategies. Okay, and Okay, excellent leaders know how to use the correct leadership style for a given situation. Kumbaga, no? being a leader, you were trained to do things. No? Even in, in the middle of crisis, you know what, what to do. Okay, so these are the things that I'm recommending here. Okay. Uh, 
Okay, I will give a copy na lang to all of you. Okay. Okay, but the, the, the slide that I will uh, give emphasis, okay? What type of leadership traits are needed in times of crisis? So act with urgency, you know, and the, especially with the crisis around when everybody is, you know, rooting on you. So act with urgency. Communicate with transparency. Do not hide anything. Respond productively to missteps, okay? Human as we are, we are prone to commit errors, but the you know, respond productively to, to this. Okay, engage in constant updating. Update members as to what we're doing. Okay, create a clear and central list of priorities. Okay, when you're confronted with problems, you're also confronted with strategies, but try to prioritize. First, a non-binary approach to problem solving. Be honest, empathetic, clear, and simple. And write down the stories. You need to document what you have done, what strategies did you do, because you need that no? in the, the next uh, crisis to come. And next, uh, the question, are we ready for the new normal? Okay, the recommendation here is that all leaders should act as if virus is there behind us or near us, okay? Meaning we must adopt strategies which, okay, is uh, taking virus as part of, of life, no? as part of normal life. So the strategies must be geared towards that particular uh, uh, premise. Okay, so the quotable quotes for an excellent leader before I live, I don't believe in failure. It is not failure if you enjoy the process. Meaning, okay, to, to enjoy the fame and power as a leader, you must exert effort, you must work hard because if you enjoyed without without passing all this, then you are not a true leader, okay? And in doing so, you've got to love what you do to really make things happen. And with that, I'm ending my presentation. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Leda, for a very comprehensive and uh, data-driven lecture. No, uh, This data hindi natin to makikita pag hindi yung magaling yung researcher natin no uh, maraming maraming salamat doc leda for sharing this information with us and for inspiring our women leaders and men leaders this afternoon so maraming salamat palakpakan po natin si doc leda <laughs> parang face to face lang no? <laughs> but uh, before we proceed to our next speaker I would like to have a two minute uh, bio break for everyone no? makakapag-CR muna yung mga kasama then, uh, yeah. we, then next we will be having they can a... ask questions while some are in the CR yes 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 okay okay so our two minute bio break will start now and uh, we will return uh, exactly 2.58 in the afternoon. Thank you. Sorry. Now we got the presentation. Okay, good. Okay, good. I uh, will have another anyway. sessions for the other details. Oh, uh, anyway, I'm going to Mga sa union na, union na siya centered. Dami again, dami again. Uh, especially ang mga data on COVID kay, because um, not everyone experienced the impact of COVID especially so, here in Metro Manila. No? In the provinces. That's why I chose this right presentation. Kay not everyone has access to the impact. Not everyone has access to data. And of course, uh, no many, uh, embracing pandemic as a way of life. The, the, the opportunity to become resilient. Even though there is a pandemic, it's not like that. Yes, yes, yes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yung mga, yung presentation ni Doc Leda, we can, can we share it with the participants, Doc? Yeah, yeah. So we will be sending the participants through email a copy of the presentation of Doc Leda for, 
further uh, immersion para mabasa din nila uh, oh. sa kanilang mga offices at, at their free time. And they also have a copy kung ano yung mga napag-discuss natin. Especially for those items na talagang maganda yung data, maganda yung assessment, at saka maganda yung message na, na bigay sa atin, mga leader. So, okay. So, let's uh, wait until the timer uh, countdown. No? May one minute pa. Let's wait for the others before I introduce the next speaker. Thank you. Okay, so we are back from a three-minute bio break. So uh, before we start with the next speaker, I would like to introduce to you our next speaker. Uh, Ma'am Jing, are you there? I'm here, but I'm asking permission to share. Okay, I will uh, designate you as a co-host. Okay. Is that set? Yes, okay. Okay. Uh, Brief introduction lang sa ating next uh, speaker. She is uh, our uh, national treasurer of the National Trade Union Center Philippines. And she is also the general secretary of the National Alliance of Teachers and Office Workers. Hopefully the future president of NTUC Philippines. Excited na kami na magkakaroon ng first woman president ng isang labor center sa Pilipinas. Walang iba kundi... Yung paborito ni Attorney Soy, si Ma'am Jing Ogalinda. Magandang hapon po, Ma'am Jing. Oh, magandang hapon. Medyo ninerbos ako sa mga sinabi mo. Baka, <laughs> baka mag-expect sila. Uh, having a friendly chat a while ago with uh, Brother Roland. Sabi ko, two years na ako hindi nag nagsiseminar, hindi na ako nag, uh, ano, nagiging speaker. Baka mga pa ako at matakot because I saw a while ago our distinguished speaker, Dr. Pleda, and I was really uh, listening to her. Sabi ko, this is very technical. Uh, uh, yung very updated yung mga, mga, mga figures at saka, of course, at, uh, should I say legit, no? Mga legit pa. So, with that, uh, given the time constraint, I would like to, to speak about the role of women in the trade union. Thank you, Roland. Ha? Baka maniwala sila. Thank you, Ma'am Jing. <laughs> ano pakaganda ng speakers natin ngayon? Kay puro lahat ng the academe. Si Ma'am Jing Ay. is also a professor with the Jose Rizal University, while Doc Leda was a professor at the University of St. Lasal. No, teacher siya oh. sa economics ni ni Sister Ling nung ah, uh -oh. Actually nagturo ako na expero sa senior but now I am connected with the graduate school. I have uh, foreign foreign students na of course we have to bank on our foreign students kasi nawala yung mga estudyante natin. I saw the impact of COVID a while ago being discussed by Doc Leda so I I am Really, feel, feel na feel ko talaga. Okay, with that, 
Siguro share screen ko na. Ito na nga ba ito? Ito. So, siguro mga 12 slides lang ito, but more on pictures. Uh, you can call me Jing. Uh, teachers ako for more than 30 years. Huwag na po tayo mag-count ng, ng, <laughs> ng edad. I had my uh, retirement uh, life after teaching in uh, senior high. Tapos ngayon nagtuturo pa rin. Talaga yung pagtuturo is a really a lifetime career. I should say that. So, us about to speak on the role of women in the labor movement. So sabi ko, ano ba? What is my K or authority to speak about it? So siguro, as a student, as a, as a teacher, as a trade unionist, and a follower to so many leaders in the National Trade Union Center, I would say that... Wait lang ha, parang hindi ako... Wait lang. So, sorry ha, inaayos pa namin ito. Kanina pa ito nagluloko. So, sabi ko, these are so, the so many roles of women in the, in the country's development. So, there are so many vacant uh, figures there. Or hexagonal, one, two, three. So, sabi ko, pwede nyo dagdag kung ano. But of course, uh, the best thing that we want to, to, as a trade union leader, is sabi ko, I want to become an organizer at this point in time. Organizer na mga hindi pa na unionize, organizer na mga hindi pa na liliwanagan, organizer na mga naliligaw pa ng landas. Because uh, this is the time that we're in, the decision is being shared. No? Most of the time, we, all, we only listen. Most of the time, kung ano yung decision nila, we, we have to, to take it out or to, to, to follow it. So, kailangan natin ngayon mag-decision. So, as a woman partner in NTUC and National Alliance of Teachers and Office Workers, I would want to become an organizer. So, you can take a pick, no? Kung ano ang gusto ninyo. But I definitely, your role is very vital. So what is the constitutional basis on the role of women and the benefits or the rights of women in the country? The Article 2 of the 1987 Constitution provides that in Section 14, the state recognizes the role of women in the nation building and shall ensure the fundamental equality before the law of women and men. So, uh, simple lang to. Hindi tayo, hindi complicated ang role natin. Tayo ay kapantay ng babae at ng lalaki. Hindi siya po pwedeng mas magaling yung isa sa isa at hindi po pwedeng naaargabyado yung isa ng isa. The other one is that mismo yung state ang mag affirms no? Magre-recognize ng labor as the primary social economic force and it shall protect the rights of workers and promote their welfare. Now, based on this, uh, based on the provision of the Constitution, ang ganda, pero sa katotohanan, nagiging pangit siya because of the realities that happen now. Not only now, but also in the past years or decades, I should say. Now, 
kanina nakita ko yung mga figures statistics. Siguro pahapyaw na lang nito na ibibigay natin. There is really a slow progress for female labor participation rate. No, at ang sabi nga, uh, ito ay kinawa ko lang din. So, according to data ang LFAs by the Philippine Statistics Authority, the total number of females in the labor force decreased from 17 million uh, 562,000 naging 17.55. So, parang ano lang, parang hindi masyadong malaki, but it, the, it is decreasing, having more than 40 million labor force in the Philippines. And then, nearly 6.6 .6 million women are engaged in the informal economy, which is completely unregulated. So, makikita natin talaga dito, may, may, may may problema sa nangyayari sa ating bansa. Kasi hindi na re recognize ang mga ginagawang contribution ng mga kababaihan. Next is, the female labor participation rate in the Philippines is among the lowest in Asian region, while the gender gap in the labor force among is, uh, in the region is really diverse. No? Masyadong malaki yung gap. Oh, sabi nga dito, despite the Philippines' reversal of the gender gap in education. So this is the only sector na medyo umarangkada ng konti but still it is not uh, parang nawala ng saysay because in realities, maski na nag-aaral, nagkaroon ng mataas na literacy rate ang mga kababaihan, still nalilip behind pa rin sila pagdating sa, sa kanilang pagkatrabaho. Next to that is, ewan ko kung ba, ah, what's this? Sabi dito, sad or happy. Uh, pag ako nagbibigay ng ganitong datos or information, sometimes, ito nararamdaman ko, sabi, na, naliligayahan ako, nasasayahan ako, kasi may mga ganito pa rin pag-aaral, may mga tao pa rin na, na nagbibigay ng pagpapahalaga sa pangyayari, no? At of course, nakakalungkot man, pero itong kalungkutan na to ay sana magbigay sa atin ng strength. No? Uh, lumakas tayo para uh, makuha pa rin natin. We need to change. No? We need uh, to create change. Ang sabi dito, women are about half of the labor force and about half of the employed in the Philippines. Alahati ng manggagawa sa Pilipinas ay babae. Pero na, dito pa rin tayo sa marginalized na sector. They are the mostly in the following present other in the following strategic sectors, healthcare, social sector, in education, and in fact, Sa education, 70% ng mga nagtuturo dito ay kababae. Pero pag tinignan mo kung sino yung mga bossing, mga lalaki. Of course, uh, in NGOs and non-profits, the human resource, personal admin, and then customer service. So nandito yung mga uh, kababaihan. They're also... Uh, overwhelming in the informal sector. So sabi nga natin, around 6.6 .6 million ay nasa informal sector. Okay, next is the value of women in the economy should not be underestimated. In addition to formal and informal work at, for income, including overseas work as OFWs. Sana alam natin kung ano yung ibig sabihin ng OFW. May alam kami dyan, hindi alam kung ano ibig sabihin ng acronym na OFWs. Okay. So, they do lots of unpaid work. And in the household, the usual caring for family and extended family. And of course, in COVID times, nabanggit kanina ng ating uh, unang speaker, 
dito tayo masyadong naabuso, or should I say, nag-sacrifice. Okay. At sa bahay, because they need to, to teach the child, uh, to support the children in their studies, naging teacher assistants pa. Na, of course, this is so taxing. Sa, alam din namin na sa part ng mga teachers na katulad namin, sabi namin, parang ang, parang ang sarap na dito sa work from home. Masarap kasi nandito ka sa bahay. Pero nung nakita mo yung mga bata na hindi ta parang na short change, kahit na, should I say, yung talagang mission mo sa pagiging teacher ay talagang gusto mo pa rin ma-serve ma ma sa mga estudyante. So, yung mga kababaihan, most of the time, no, unpaid yung work nila. But still, they keep on doing it for the sake of the family, for the sake of, sabihin na nga natin na, kasi nandito na ito, trabaho na natin ito. But of course, there are so many ways para mapa, ma, mabigyan natin ito ng value no? uh, in our society and also in the union, I should say. Sa mga bahay natin, halos lahat ang mga kababihan na gumagawa. Nag-research kami sa, sa aming uh, federation, the National Alliance of Teachers and Office Workers. Uh, still, nandodong pa din yung patriarchal attitude, yung mga bossing attitude ng mga kalalakihan pagdating ng araw, ay pagdating sa bahay. So, nandodong pa rin. So, yung stereotype, na attitude na dyan pa rin. Sabi namin, despite the so many seminars no, na ginagawa ng federation, ng NTUC, still parang pumapayag. Parang nagiging matiisin na lang ba? Okay. So, of course, yung mga trabaho na yan ay yung mga trabaho na ayaw ng mga kalalakihan at hindi sila daw sanay. Yung some, something na nagbibigay ng servisyo, na nag-care, na pwede sabihin natin na uh, siguro gusto lang nilang ipapil na talagang they are the men of the house or the man of the house. So, saying that delivering and caring for a child is equivalent to two and a half times normal work. So kaya nga ba sabi, kung mag-aalaga na rin lang ako ng bata, pupunta na lang ako sa ibang bansa kasi four hour ang I am paid for hours. So iba ang mga Pilipino eh, ang panga Pilipina rather. I, so this is a great responsibility and no one, sabi nga nila, wala daw makakagawa nito kundi ang ina. Uh, hindi po tayo maniniwala dyan. There should be a shared responsibility kasi share, shared naman nung nagkar nagkaroon ng baby. Bringing and bringing up children to be good workers and citizens ay trabaho ng mag-asawa. Of course, kaya nga ba kailangan natin we need to increase the women and youth participation in the trade union activities. So, kanina nakita natin na sinabi ng ati speaker that, that because of COVID, nagkaroon na ng uh, de decline or the reduced number of members in a particular federation. Yung mga appellates po, like for example, in our case, marami nagsarang eskwelahan yung mga small schools ng mga of course, yung colleges and universities medyo nakakasurvive pa. Pero pagdating doon sa mga basic education lang ang kinikater na pa private school, marami na hong nagsara. From 40 teachers, naging 20 na lang. From 30 teachers in the provinces, naging 12 na lang. And then, bakit po? Inapwera ng, ng package na kung saan ay alam namin na hindi pa siya Hindi siya dapat, no? Because what is important is uh, employment uh, preservation. Pero dahil sa wala na rin ipapasweldo, sige. 
So kami po sa federations, ano bang ginawa namin? Talagang ay yung 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 Zoom, yung webinars, nagamit po namin 'yan to to negotiate with the management about the the of course yung package in offer nila sa mga sa mga teachers and non-teaching personnel. So one story nga na, sa isang university nag-pay cut po sila. Suppose ang sweldo mo ay a month is about 40,000. Sa so, nag-pay cut sila around eh, di ko alam kung five ko ilang sweldo. Parang naging 35 na lang yung sweldo. Eh so, tapos nag nag magre-retire na yung yung na-pay cut. Alam niyo ba ang ginawa ng management? Yung kanyang retirement pay ay kinompute based on the amount na nagkaroon na po ng pay cut. So, kailangan po namin talaga pang tutukan. So, stop gap measure tapos ginawa ng naging polisiya ng, ng management. So, as a leader, as a federation, kailangan mong tulungan sila. So yan na lang po ang ginawa namin nung magmula noong nagka-COVID. Lahat po ng nagka-problema, pasok kami ng pasok. Uh, uh, meeting ng meeting via Zoom. And then, kasi nakikita namin talagang tinake advantage din ng mga, ng mga management o may-ari ng eskwelahan sa private, na private school yung pagkakaroon ng pandemic. So, bakit kailangan po natin na increase ang women and youth participation in trade unions? Kasi nakita ko din po sa pag-aaten namin, nakita ko nga ho doon sa National Tripartite, si Brother Roland na lang ang pinaka-bata doon eh. Uh, so sabi ko to si Roland, matagal pa to rito, pero uh, he's really gaining his uh, grounds and his strength and recognize as really a very active participant in the in the national tripartite industrial peace council and most of them are around 60 70 may mga 80 pa nga so in the federations no i would i would uh, urge the leaders here to to invest on the young or the youth and the women uh members in your federations. I-train po natin na i-train sila sapagkat uh, kailangan po natin na ang magkaroon ng uh, magre-replenish or the, the second or the third line of leaders in uh, the federations. And so as to prevent vacuum, vacuum in leadership. Uh, ayon din po sa pag-aaral, even not only in the Philippines, na makikita na pag namatay na yung leader, minsan namamatay na rin po yung union. So siguro kasalanan din ito ng leader na hindi siya nag-train. So as women leaders, kahit kailangan, meron kang, uh, should you say, I, I say champion, na kung saan, develop mo na siya. Pag nakita mo siya ng potential, Ta kailangan mo na siyang i-push eh. Sometimes, kailangan natin maging pusher para at saka to give them opportunities. Uh, nung nag na, nung nag-conduct po ako ng young leadership training, uh, nakita ko sa mga teachers, hindi lang po, nag meron mga Pilipino at meron mga sa ASEAN at saka sa SARC region. Alam niyo ba ang sagot nila? The... The leaders, no, the president or the, the, the top leaders of the country who are already uh, 70s or 80s uh, are the ones choosing who will be the participants for a particular activity. So very selective sila. May favoritism no ma, uh, regardless kung yung tao na yon ay may potential to become leaders someday. So siguro dapat yun lang ay encourage ko sa inyo sapagkat yung pagiging uh, pagkapunta ko po sa National uh, Trade Union Center of the Philippines at saka dati pong TUCT eh dahil lang po din sa mga pagpupo sa akin no matenta ng leadership training 
At hindi sabi ko hindi ko po pinangarap na maging leader. Pero naging presidente po ako dahil sinabi ng teacher ko, kumu maging assistant treasurer ka. Sabi ko ayoko niyang pinanghahawakan ng pera. I, what I want is nagsusulat, nagdodokumento kasi matututo ako doon. Then after that, sige. Sige na, yung pusher po, kailangan po talaga somebody, someone who will believe in you. It is very necessary to build the trust and confidence of the person. So kailangan po natin yan. And then dapat po maging galante tayo sa pag sa pagbibigay ng commendations. Kahit na tinatap mo lang yung shoulder niya, kahit na yung good, very good, oh, this is nice, ang laki-laki na po yan uh, effect sa mga tao na, na nagbibuild pa ng confidence. So ulitin ko po, kung wala po po tayong natitrain na women and youth who will replace us in the near future, Sana po gawin na po natin. Let them attend seminars training. And then put them in the governing bodies. Sometimes nahihiya lang yan magpa-nominate. O ayaw po nilang mag-nominate, kayo na po mismo ang mag-nominate sa kanila. Tapos sasabihin niya, nako baka hindi ko kaya. Syempre assurance lang po kasi yan po ang ginawa sa akin. No, katulad nito si Si Brother Roland, pusher talaga rin yan. No? Kaya mo yan, kaya mo yan. Uh, pero sabi ko, mas ikaw ang qualified dyan. No? We need young blood to be infused no? so that the young blood and the veterans will join forces. Kailangan po natin ngayon yan. Okay, so yung mga kabataan po, kailangan na nakikita sila na nagpa-participate sa mga discussions. Huwag po natin babarahin no? ang kanilang mga ideas. Give them the chance to be heard and recognize also their, their intellectual capacity, their wise decision, the wisdom. Kahit na po bata yan, meron, pa rin, meron po sila talagang sariling uh, trajectory, no? Alam nila ko ano, alam din nila ko sino yung magaling para mga estudyante lang din. Okay. Okay, wag lang po natin silang gawing secretariat. Wag lang po natin gawin. Oh, gawa mo ka ng PowerPoint. Oy, gawa pa ki check mo to. Paki pakigawa ka ng uh, tawag dito, ng financial statement o gumawa ka ng mag-design ka ng tarpaulin. Okay, kung nakita mo na maganda, magaling na, may, may kapasidad na, kahit na pag mc ipisahan mo, no? yan po yung ginagawa namin. O pag naka-attend ka na ng isang seminar dyan, o hindi ka na sekretariat, ha? Ano ka na, mag mc ka na, magpapasilitate ka na. So nakikita, nakikita po natin na talagang uh, yung gusto natin mangyari sa kanya ay magaganap in the near future because we open the gates for the person or for that for, for the youth or for the women okay so at present, alam naman natin ito nung una pa, nung pa may mga challenge and barriers for more women and youth leadership in the trade union and society. So sabi nga, ano po ba ang, uh, ang team ngayon? Break the bias. Sabi ko, pwede break the barriers to youth leadership. Alisin, and women leadership. So yung mga sinasabi natin, mga stereotype, yung mga overburden na ang trabaho, lalo na sa amin sa pagiging teacher, lalo na ngayon. Uh, uh, konting mali mo lang, nakasumbong na kagad yung mga parents kasi pati yung parents nakikisali sa Zoom meeting. Tapos uh, meron pa nga ito, napakasimple lang nito eh. Alam nyo ba, ultimo yung pronunciation ng teacher medyo may regional defect aba eh nakasumbong ka agad tapos ano isusumbong na para to malign or to insult 
Sabi ko, bakit hindi niya nakita? Hindi naman talaga tayo English speaking. Dapat nakita niya kung ano yung esensya na sinasabi. Alam niyo ba, in, ano yun? Uh, magaling na teacher pero nasusumbong pa. So mga mga ganong mga challenges, kung ganoon na may challenge na sa pagtuturo, may challenge na sa trabaho, ang tingin po ba na ang ang magiging epekto niyan? Mag-aano pa ho ba tayo? Mag mag-uunyon pa ba tayo? Mag-iisip pa ba tayo maging leader? So I think uh konti na lang ito, tuta lang yata ang slides na ito. Okay. So these barriers must be turned down, torn down. Punitin po natin 'yan. Women and youth must be helped, assisted, enabled to contribute as they could. So uh, gawin po natin 'yan to the family, to the economy, oh nawala na. And of course to all to the sectors where these youth and women belong. So this has to be intention, plan, program, promoted, and monitored. I, I believe that you have a gender program in your in your federations. That is why nakit natuwa nga ako eh. Uh, meron kay meron dito si ang nakusip si IO kaya ang pasibu uh, under the uh, of course umbrella of uni. So this is very important. No, wag po nating iwawala ang pagkakaroon ng mga activities para sa kababaihan, no, at kabataan. Uh, in fact, uh, sa amin po may resolution kami at naging policy yan na na women concern and the youth concern form part of the general program of the union. Kaya Yan. Every time na meron kayong even collective bargaining, even social dialogue, pero may merong women's concern na ipapasok kami kung ano yung batas ngayon, ano yung dapat i-ratify ngayon, ano po yung issue ngayon tungkol sa mga kababaihan. So, pero may namin dinadagdagan ng ganon. So, sabi nga, this, this issue on women cannot be left to the usual normal pace of development. So kailangan tayo na mo, po mismo ang mag-create no, ng mga pagkakataon at ng opportunities para sa atin din mismo. Okay, sabi nga dito, others, otherwise walang kwenta po yung mga ginagawa natin kung puro seminar lang. So kailangan talaga, katulad kung member kayo na executive board niyo, in look at the program of your union. Meron pa, pa dito pang babae, pang, pang kabataan. So tingnan po natin kung meron talagang uh, investment doon ang ating union. Okay, as women leaders, we should take part in the main roles of trade unions. At alam, dalawa lang naman yung naiisip natin na uh, uh, role ng trade unions. Kaya sabi natin, we have to negotiate and we have to represent. No? I-represent yung union, i-represent na rin po natin ang ating sektor na kababaihan sapagkat no one will do that for us. Kailangan po talaga maging representative tayo. Sa negotiation, ang hirap ipasok ang women's concern. No? Like for example, yung uh, nursing break. Ang hirap po niyan. Uh, ang hirap ipasok pero nakuha po namin. Tapos yung ire-represent mo yung mga kabataan at mga ka, mga kababaihan. Kailangan po yan. Through, uh, of course, kailangan po. May dialogue tayo, Permi. Ang union po dapat kahit na monthly or weekly, meron po tayong mga pag-uusap. Wala pong, walang typing, wala pong timing yan. Kung kinakailangan mag-usap araw-araw, kailangan po mag-usap because communication is very important. So, kailan? Now na daw. <laughs> okay. So, siguro this is my last. Being a strong woman does not make you a difficult individual. It just means that you know your worth. Liting ko po, kailangan mismo kung walang gumagawa po sa atin, kung walang nagsusulong ng ating, uh, ating concern sa union, eh di umpisahan po natin, eh nandiyan ka na po eh. Nandiyan ka na po. Because we, alam, alam po dapat natin ang worth natin. 
Siguro, yun na lang po. And thank you so much. Salamat po. So, ayan po. We can make change work. We make change work for women. Hindi po tayo ichapuera, partner po tayo sa development or economic development. At okay. Thank you. Salamat po. Okay. Thank you <laughs> okay. very much Thank for a po. very inspiring uh, session. No? Uh, okay. Feeling Thank naming you. mga barako dito ay bumakit <laughs> na ganyan. Si Pangulong Lupe, oh, pangalan niya nga, pangalan ni misis niya, kaya si takot siyang papalabahin mamaya. No? <laughs> So, maraming salamat uh, Ma'am Jing for a very salamat. inspiring uh, session, no? Uh, diyan nakikita na gaano kalakas, no? At saka kaimportante ang kababaihan not only in the labor sector but as well in the trade union movement, no? Uh, and and talaga I, I mean when I said that I we expect you to be the first women woman president of a national labor center in the future, in the future. No, maraming yeah. salamat. Maraming salamat, Ma'am Jing. Yan ang talagang pusher. <laughs> Mas maganda salamat. pa maging pusher ka sa union, wag lang sa ibang bagay. <laughs> okay, okay, before thank we Thank you so much. Thank It's you, my honor. Before yes. we I know we, we go to our next speaker. Um, pwede po ba tayong mag-open ng ating uh, mga cameras para doon sa group picture kasi we, we are we are 30 Uh, remote areas but we are around 52 participants in 30 remote areas. So, isang shot lang ito ha. Uh, wait lang. Wait ko lang mabuksan lahat ng mga cameras. I saw Tara. familiar faces. <laughs> yes, yes. So, at karamihan, mga kababaihan na nandito kasi this is part of our International Women's Month celebration. So kami mga lalaki ay honorary women in this celebration. Okay? So yung iba siguro um, hindi pwede makapag-open ng camera kasi nasa work. No? So ito, uh, magka-count ako ng three. Mag-smile man tayo dyan. Okay? Oh, wait lang. Okay, one, two, three. Thank you. Okay, one more time. One, two, three. Okay, thank you. Thank you everyone sa ating group picture. Okay, so okay. ipapakilala ko na po. No? Uh, before that, can we be give uh, Ma'am Jing a sang bagsak? Okay, thank you, thank you. Salamat. Okay. So, sa sunod po na mag sa na speaker natin, uh, siya po yung uh, director ng Uni Global Union Asia Pacific Region for Youth, MEI and Gaming. Siya po ay mag uh, si share sa atin yung Uni Global Union campaign. Supporting women's health in the workplace. Welcome po natin si Sister Mitch Bellino. Good afternoon, Sister Mitch. Thank you, Sir Roland. And magandang hapon po sa lahat. Good afternoon, Sister Lee. Uh, Sir Roland, uh, permission to post uh, share screen naman po. Ayan, okay na po. Nakuhost na po kita. Okay. Ayan. Ayan. Nakikita nyo na po ba yung presentation? Okay na ba, sir? Yes, yes, yes. Very yes. Good. Thank you. Okay. So, magandang, magandang, magandang hapon po sa inyong lahat. So, Sir Roland, Sister Ling, Dr. Leda Selly, Sister Jean, Uh, at sa lahat po ng nandito ngayon sa webinar natin, isang magandang magandang hapon po sa inyong lahat. So ako po si Michelle Bellino, so pinakilala na ako ni Sir Roland. Uh, karamihan sa inyo kilala na ako, nagkita na rin tayo nung bago pa mag-pandemic at uh, sa mga webinars din ng, uh, ng PASIWU. 
So briefly introduction lang din. Uh, talagang nakinig ako with uh, with our previous speakers and tamang-tama talaga and very timely yung kanilang mga presentations with regards to International Women's Month regarding representation and participation of women or the role of women in the trade union movement. So ako rin po ay galing sa trade union. Ako po ay former uh, employee ng Banco de Oro Employees uh, Association, BDOEA. Uh, I worked there for 16 years and... Um, Naging active din ako for youth committee and uh, tama po ang sinabi ni Sister Jean kanina na talagang ang youth involvement ay napaka-importante lalong-lalo na po rin yung transition. And uh, nagpapasalamat ako na yung aking mentor ay nandito rin ngayon sa webinar, si Brother Rain na uh, susunod na magiging presidente ng National Union of Bank Employees. So ako ay uh, masayang-masaya dahil sa involvement. Pero hindi ko po pag-uusapan ang youth ngayon dahil ako po ay nasa women webinar natin ngayon. So ang uh, ang ire-report ko po ay present ko sa si inyo yung campaigns po ng Uni Equal Opportunities or Uni Afro Women then on women's health in um, workplaces. So bago po yan, bigyan ko lang po kayo ng uh, brief uh, in information kung ano po yung Uni Global Union. So ang Uni Global Union po was created noong January year 2000. So it ito po ay nag-merge ng apat na Global Union Federation from uh, international uh, Internal Graphical Federation, uh, FIET, which is from the Commerce and Finance, also sa Communication and International sa Post and Logistics, and Media and Entertainment. So ito pong apat na Global Union Federation ay nagkaisa para po mabigyan ng boses, mal malakas na boses ang trade union. So under Uni Global Union po, meron po tayong... Uh, regional organizations. Ah, uh, sandali lang po ah. Ayun po. Kasi may isa pa akong meeting, pasensya tong matawag sa akin. So under Uni Global Union po, meron po tayong apat na regional organization. Ito po yung Africa, Americas, Uni Asia Pacific and Europa. So dito po tayo kabilang sa Asia Pacific region. Na ang headquarters po natin ay sa Singapore office. So meron po tayong Tokyo office sa Japan at yung APRODES, ibig sabihin kami pong mga hindi Singaporean ay may home-based countries po kami uh, nag-work. So under Uni APRO po, meron tayong 20 countries na uh, affiliated with Uni APRO at meron tayong 172 affiliates at meron tayong 2.33 million membership. And sa buong Uh, Uni Global naman po uh, world uh, globally meron po tayong 140 countries uh, affiliated with Uni with 900 affiliate members and almost 20,000 uh, trade and strong union members. At syempre dito po sa Philippines um, ang mga kasapi po ng Uni PLC ay miyembro po or affiliated po sila sa Uni Global Union. Um, ang makikita nyo rin po dito sa sectors natin, we have finance, ICT, S-Post, and etc. At ang composition po niya, pinakamalaking sektor ng, uh, sa, sa, sa uni is ang commerce or retail sector. Meron siyang 25%. E eh, gaya po ng sinabi kanina ni uh, Dr. Celis, uh, um, ang commerce sector or ang retail worker ay isa sa mga highest Employ, highest in employment. Pero kung titingnan niyo po sa Philippines, napaka-low ng union uh, development natin with comes to commerce sector. Ang dami po nating uh, commerce um, sector dito na hindi pa siya unionized. Uh, ang susunod po ay finance with 18% uh, representation, ICTS and post and logistics. So, uh, Under din po ng Uni Global Union, meron tayong interprofessional group, yan po yung women, youth, and uh, professionals and managerials. Okay, okay po. So uh, last year po, uh, during the Women's Month last March, ang campaign po ng Uni Equal Opportunities is hashtag essential women workers. So dito po, ang campaign po is for the rights of essential women workers. The fight for women rights is far from over. And the pandemic, gaya po nang nangyari sa atin, ay lalong dumagdag yung struggle doon sa mga uh, essential women workers. So marami pong essential jobs sa atin dito during COVID-19 are dispropor disproportionately held by women and working on the uh, frontline workers, 
who are risking their jobs and really suffering from violence. Narinig naman din po natin sa sinabi ng ating uh, previous speakers. So ito pong mga frontline workers na to, they are underpaid and undervalued. And uh, they're often without sick pay or at even adequate uh, PPE. So nabanggit din po yan kanina. So itong mga nakikita nyo po sa, sa slides ko, ito po yung mga campaign materials na ginamit namin last year uh, during the International Women's Day. Kasi we showed the power, the world, the power of unions. Ibig sabihin po, with unions, we have a voice. With unions, we have support. And with unions, women win. Yan po yung aming uh, campaign po um, last year. So this year naman po, uh, in celebration of uh, International Women's Day, uh, last March 8, uh, nag-launch po ng campaign ang Uni Equal Opportunities on hashtag WomenOHS or Women Occupational Health and Safety. This is in supporting the women's health in the workplace. Nabanggit din po kanina na ang percentage ng labor force ng women workers ay almost half. And uh, ang sabi nga rin po ni Ms. Jean kanina, one half are women and one half are employed. So napakalaking uh, basihan po ito para pangalagaan ang health and safety risk na nag impact sa women workers. Kung makikita nyo po dito sa ating um, slide, nakalag, nag, nag, ang campaign is on occupational health and safety risk impacting women. Um, Doon po sa ito, sa babaeng na, nandito natin, na ginawa natin siyang model, etong nasa top, sa head, ang, ang impact nito with women is yung anxiety and stress dahil sa unequal division of unpaid care and domestic responsibilities. So ang mga women workers po kasi hindi lang po siya basta nagtatrabaho, yun lang ang iniisip niya. Ang May domestic responsibilities din po siya gaya ng sinabi kanina na ang pamilya uh, isa rin po itong iniisip at dandag din po to sa anxiety and stress ng mga women workers. Pangalawa po, ang PPE designed for men. So ito pong nakaraang COVID dahil ngayon lang naman po tayo nakapagsuot ng mga PPE equipments mostly on the health sector. Karamihan po dito ay fitted or designed for men. So syempre, kapag men siya, me, med, meron sigurong ma, ma, mabigat yung PPE. And if women ang magsosoot nun or kababaihan ang magsosoot nun, hindi siya komportable sa katawang pang babae. Uh, aside po doon, yung lifting and standing during pregnancy, isa rin po itong uh, safety risk impacting women. Uh, marami po kayo siguro sa union o marami rin po kayong miyembro na buntis na pero eh, dahil sa tawag ng trabaho, kailangan po nilang magbuhat ng mamibigat or kailangan po nilang umakyat sa hagdanan. Ito po ay naging issue rin sa Australia dahil sa pinakamalaking commerce or retail sector po ang sa, sa region natin, ang Australia. Uh, yung mga women workers po na umaakyat ng ladder lalo na po sa mga grocery shops uh, yung kumukuha ng mga kahon. So, yun po ay isang um, safety risk na kailangan din nating tignan bilang kababaihan. Sumunod po yung exposure to high chemicals. So, dominant po ito sa mga sa female workers na nag-work sa cleaning sector. Siyempre, ang pag-cleaning ka, ang, ang, kailang, ang, ang gagamitin mo or majority ng ginagamit mo sa buong katawan is kamay. And which is prone to chemicals or exposure to chemicals, lalo na kung naglilinis ka ng mga cubicles or uh, sa mga toiletries or yan. So yan po ang isa po rin namin tinitignan. Sumunod po yung night shifts dito po. Siyempre, uh, kapag ka po uh, uh, ang trabaho mo eh, panggabi, so uh, nagkakaroon po ito ng impact sa inyong reproductive cycles. Meron pong uh, irregular periods or delayed conception. So nakaka-apekto rin po ito sa katawan ng babae. Uh, sumunod naman po is yung MSD or yung uh, musculoskeletal disorder. Uh, kasama rin ito sa mga retail workers. So dahil nga po yung repetitive uh, tasks na ginagawa nila and for ergonomics, yung masyadong nakatayo. Yung 8 hours ko ang trabaho mo po eh, required kang tumayo for 8 hours. Tapos kailangan mo naka-heels, mga ganun po. Uh, marami po niyan sa retail din. 
Et yung poor ergonomics naman po is yung halimbawa po ay eh, masyadong matagal naman po ang trabaho niyo nakaupo. So hindi rin po siya maganda sa health po ng babae. So this uh, 8th of March, uh, uni equal opportunities po is supporting women's health in workplace. Nagkaroon po kami ng raising awareness to include the gender perspective in occupational health and safety policies. So ang aim po ng campaign namin is to understand the issues that affect women in the workplace. Pangalawa po is to make these issues visible. Hindi lang po ito hang natatapos dito sa ating webinar. Napakadami po nating union dito. So maganda po na i-share nyo rin po ito within your own unions para po uh, lumawak po ang kaalaman natin with regards to health and safety in workplace. We also campaign and aim to address these topics such as reproductive and sexual health, women's health, especially in ovarian and breast cancer, also mental health, pregnancy, and loss. And also lastly, to aim at creating model policies for unions to include in their OSH plans or your occupational safety and health plans nyo po. So syempre sa mga union natin, meron tayong mga occupational safety and health na guidelines. So uh, gusto po namin makipagtulungan and mag-work with the unions to include these policy models kung paano po natin mapapalaganap uh, itong ating um, mga issues na kinakaharap ng women and to include this in our OSH plans. So dito po, uh, gaya ng sabi ng UNIAPRO women, women's rights including health are better protected with the union. So yun lang po yung aking may share ngayon with regards to campaign po ng UNIAPRO on International Women's Day. So kung may questions po kayo, please feel free and I'm willing po to, to respond to that. Salamat po, Sir Roland. Salamat po sa lahat. Thank you. Thank you very much, Sister Mitch, for the sharing and the session. Uh, malaking bagay din na, na, na inform natin yung mga uh, kasamahan kasi marami po dito talaga yung sectors na kasama sa uni. No? Nandito yung properties natin, nandito yung Unicare. So napakamalaking bagay na, na exposed din sila ano yung mga programa natin sa uni at saka sa UniAPRO. At saka hindi lang po tayo local, pang international pa. So salamat, salamat Sister Mitch, salamat sa time mo. And sige, uh, after this, uh, after the pre presentation of Sister Mitch, we will be having a sharing no, from uh, the different women trade union leaders we have nationwide. No? We have one sharer from Luzon one sharer from Visayas and one sharer from Mindanao. No, so simula natin uh, ang ating unang mag uh, share ng kanyang experience as a woman trade union leader is uh, is Sister Lorna Garcia. Siya po ay isang uh, mat matagal na po na leader ng Nakusip dito sa Luzon. She is the former the president of the former union in Balayan Sugar Central and right now she is she is also the current uh, union president of URC Sure Balayan Labor Union. So palapakan po natin si Sister Lorna Garcia. Sister Lorna. Ayun. Hello. Ayun, ayun. ayun. Good afternoon Sister Lorna. Good afternoon po. Good afternoon, sir. Thank you po sa papapakilala niyo sa akin. At mm, mag-share lang po ako ng mga naging experience ko dito para sa pag-leader ko since 2004 as a president ng union. Hanggang sa na-take over po ng URC ng 2016 as, as president pa rin po ako as of now. At sa pag-suporta po ni Sir Roland at ng nakusip at mga ng ating samahan, eh andito pa rin po ako. Medyo may edad na pero handa pa rin po magsilbi sa mga manggagawa at sa atin lahat. Ah, nais nice ko pong i-share sa inyo yung naging experience ko dito sa Amens. Sa maging, naging maganda rin po naman ang, ang aming naging Tungkol po sa women's, wala po naman kami, wala pong violation para sa mga kababaihan. 
Uh, tama po yung sinasabi ni ng mga ating speaker na nakadagdag alam para sa akin na dapat lagi tayo ay may patas sa babae at sa lalaki. Dahil tayo, katulad ko po, ako ay babae, pero 42 years akong nagwo-work. Nagwo-work ako sa company at yan ay sa loob po ng 42 years ko, wala po ako na-intercept na naging problema. At sana po ay patuloy pa rin ang pag sa sa trade women's trade uh, uh, leader ay maging maging makatarungan tayong mga babae sa paglalaban ng ating karapatan. Uh, hindi po dapat po tayo ay maging pantay-pantay sa karapatan ng mga kababaihan. Tayo po kahit babae ay nagtatrabaho rin. Ang nagagawa ng babae, ng lalaki ay nagagawa rin ng mga babae. Kaya tayo po ay tulong sa lahat. Yan po ang aking nasasabi na kahit po ang aming sa balayan ay eh wala po ako na intercept ng mga problema tungkol sa mga kababaihan at maganda po naman ang nagiging sitwasyon. At na, naging maganda po para sa, sa aking mga miyembro na ang naging leader, ang nag-leader ng napakahabang panahon ay babae. Yan po ang isa kong naipap na itutulong. Katulad ko, ako po sa mga barangay, nagsishare din po ako kung paano namin, ma, paano ko sila matutulungan para sa mga miyembro ng kababaihan. Yan po ay, yan po ay, nariyan po rin ang aming mga, mga pagiging livelihood. Para ko sila kumita kahit po kami pandemic, tumutulong ako sa kanila, nagsishare ako sa kanila para madagdagan ang kanilang kaalaman sa pagiging, sa, pa, sa karapatan ng mga kababaihan. Yan po at maraming salamat. Hello? Isang, isang malaking palakpak at saka isang bagsak para kay Kalorna. Maraming salamat po, Kalorna. Thank you, thank you. Thank you. Oh. Si Kalorna isa sa mga masisipag at mga dedikadong leader. No? Salamat po. Trade union leader. Laging matapang. Matapang. At saka hindi lang po sa union, pati doon sa community. No? Uh, Salamat po, Mr. Saka, Rola. Nagpapasalamat din kami doon sa kadikalaan mo na yung tulong mo doon sa mga apektado ng taal. No? Nung sumabog yung taal na binuksan Thank mo yung bahay mo. para sa mga ibang members at saka mga kasama niyo sa community. Yun po ang aking may papagbalaki kahit ako ay maipat ko basta hindi ko kaya iwanan ang mga taong lumalapit at sumihingi ng tulong sa akin. Yun po ako. At saka hindi lang ano, hindi lang magaling na labor leader si Ate Lorna. The best din yang magluto. Kaya <laughs> Kaya Pag kayo ko kayo sa, sa balayan. Bago, kayo mag, bago ako mag-retired, iimbitahan ko kayo magluluto tayo ng maraming klaseng luto. Pati si, ano, pati si Lance Gokong Wei, yung kanilang boss, ay paborito yung linuto ni Ate Lorna. Oo, si Naing Natawilis. Oh, okay, thank you. Thank you, okay, Ate Lorna. Thank you. Opo. Thank you. Opo, yung okay, sunod po nating speaker... ay uh, isang leader po natin no sa Visayas. Siya po ay isang napakasipag no at saka talagang dedikado sa kanyang trabaho. Siya po ay si Sister Emily Ledesma, yung nakusip Deputy General Secretary. Take it away, Sister Emily. Hello. Ayun. Hello. Okay, Good ready ka na rin. Yeah, okay na. O sige. Uh, a blessed whole day to everyone. Okay, this activity is a very timely for us uh, women as a trade women leader. Well, as our rule being a woman in a labor movement. Uh, being one of the labor leader, a lot of experiences come on our way in our journey to expand the movement. started with organizing, information, dissemination, and advocacy. One of the hardships we encounter is a resistance of some women due to their tremendous task in their homes, especially in their family. Uh, we work hard to let them understand our rule and how as women leader, 
can work well for the welfare of women as labor leaders. Their rule to succeed in their efforts will be determined how they will play their part effectively, right? So as a woman lead, labor leader, we do not stop and give up if there is a resistance in our work. We convince them some, some more and empower them sa paraan na makukuha natin ang loob ng mga kababaihan at maintindihan nila ang rule ng mga babae as a labor leader. Kaya ito ang mga paraan na ginagawa namin para lumakas ang loob nila. I was one of the area coordinator of a coalition project which was uh, given to me by at late attorney Zuelo de la Cruz. It's a coalition project of a trade union and a, a certain NGO entitled Empowering Women in the Informal Sector that was last 1996 to 2000. We designed a series of training seminars to our women organization in the pilot area. We organized some meetings of Buong Negros Occidental and we selected a pilot area na doon namin talagang i-focus yung mga programa ng informal sector project para makita namin yung concrete uh, development, concrete uh, organizing ng mga kababaihan doon sa area that was Victoria City. Until we succeed to get their commitment to join the movement. Brothers and sisters, this is our only a few of the many problems we encounter as labor leaders. But as I said, don't give up. That we pledge to them all the support from us, from our organization that is boundless. And being one is a great importance of being a labor leader. So our labor leaders present right now, I would say that be patient, be determined in your rule, and soon success will be ours. Mabuhay tayong lahat. Thank you and congratulations to all of us. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Sister Emily. Isang bagsak para kay Sister Emily. <laughs> Ayun. Thank you, boy. Thank Ay, you, thank you. Si thank you, thank you so parang much. si Miriam Defensor lang yung nagsispeak, no? <laughs> or si Mila, no? <laughs> Si, si Sister Emily ay, ay maraming, ano, maraming role ko na ina-assume siya rin yung Assistant National Treasurer natin handling the Visayas operation. So she is a full-time trade union worker at uh, walang pagod, no? walang pagod sa kanyang service sa lahat ng mga members na toli ng nakusip pati na rin pasiwo CIO and FLO. So maraming salamat Sister Emily. Sister Emily. Yeah. Thank you, thank you very much. Thank you much. so much. Thank Opo. So next, uh, next na tatawagin po ay yung share natin from uh, Mindanao. Uh, she is the vice president of CIO for Mindanao. She is handling the banana industry unions in Campostela Valley and Tabo del Norte. She is the daughter of our uh, of our former and our late and uh, and we miss her our female and woman leader uh, Ma'am Flor Kabatingan. Let us all welcome Sister Josefina Lim, or uh, commonly called by us Ate Joy. Ate Joy, magandang hapon. Good afternoon, good afternoon, Zatanan, and thank you, Sir Roland, for that very. Um, um, emotional, <laughs> uh, very good words. I mean, nice words. Uh, as we remembered our um, former vice president for Virginia, now Sister Flor Capetin, and it was her second year death anniversary yesterday. So anyway, uh, since we're in the Women's Month, and uh, we also we had remembered her, we will now. Uh, I will now share to you my trade union experience. Uh, in the, in the labor movement. I've been in the trade union movements for more than 20 years uh, in another union at that. 
and uh, currently as the vice president for Mindanao with the banana industry uh, in Tongval. So uh, actually, um, being a trade union leader, uh, a woman at that is a very challenging role. No, it's not easy, but it's fulfilling. Um, I've seen that with my mother, uh, how she had worked and uh, loved the movement. In fact, she's been, uh, practically married to the labor movement. So um, it is indeed challenging as we have uh, many issues and concerns that we did not confront. But um, also uh, fulfilling because you get to serve um, those who are in need and uh, do something for them. So as a trade union woman leader, I got to experience uh, all sorts of uh, activities, uh, facing different challenges in the areas of organizing, uh, education, no? So mahirap, but then uh, it's madali, uh, it's fulfilling. So, um, Ang, ang maganda lang kasi, ang, ang medyo challenging on the part of the women na maging trade union leader is breaking the social cultural bar barriers, no? Uh, the, what they call this, dimension kakanina yung, uh, yung uh, social, uh, cultural uh, restrictions placed by the communities. But then once you are out of it, um, women can do a lot. No. Uh, in fact, even in the family, we already take leadership roles. No, when we decide things, we do things for the family. That in itself is leadership. So to become a leader, it's either by choice or you are born with it. But in the context of the trade union movement, what is important is hindi tayo nalalayo on what is our objective on becoming a trade union leader. So. Um, in the women uh, challenge, uh, women's challenge space na in the labor movement, um, the, these concerns uh, came about when we saw the increased number of participation of women in the labor sector. So, um, however, dito din lumabas yung ano, uh, anong gagawin natin na yung mga kababayahan natin ay magiging is isang ano din, uh, sector na may mga accomplishments. So basically, uh, in addressing women's concern, and as a trade union leader, woman trade union leader, we should not uh, divert from the goal of uh, the gender program, which is women empowerment. No? Uh, we have created the different committees in the, in the, in the local level but uh, and the purpose of that is to give women equal opportunities for representation and a space for active participation in the decision making progress a uh, process so we are in there and uh, women trade union leaders have played important roles in achieving this ako uh, din uh, part din ako diyan pero again as i mentioned er earlier it's a challenge no the challenge were already mentioned by uh, sister uh, emily and of course ni sister lorna but uh, ang what is important is we should not lose sight on what we want to attain or achieve as a woman trade union leader especially in uh, empowering our women workers uh, ang for me, the most important uh, challenge and to promote women participation uh, in all aspects of organizing, negotiating, etc., is to break that social cultural restrictions. You know? uh, good thing with our urban women workers because they were able to come out of their shells and have that many opportunities to be to be to be part of the women workforce. However, uh, doon naman sa ating mga counterparts, sa ating mga rural na women, medyo may mga restrictions pa, although hindi lahat. Those working in the agro-industrial uh, sectors like the banana industry have uh, somehow showed empowerment. In fact, uh, in one of our locals in Kombal, and um, not one on, in the three locals in Kombal, the one of the 
forces that uh, drove the former union no, and created the existing union, uh, women leaders were involved, heavily involved in the taking over or of the, of the coming of creating or choosing the union that they will want to present, represent them. And ito nga, tumasok tayo sa CIO. So um, leadership qualities, yes, it has to be there. Uh, the mention ni Ma'am, uh, Dr. Lenda Kagalina. And in fact, Anna may isa ko because uh, it was those identified qualities na na mention niya are really attuned no, to the call of times. And this is what I would like to see in our future leaders. It's not easy, but we can do that. Um, it will take some time, but the important thing is we have the will. Uh, we want to be part of the changes and we want to be in the front line. So yun lang, just go for it and continue uh, claiming on what is worth for the women and you know putting great value to the women as a worker. Thank you, folks. Thank you, Ate Joy. Isang bagsak para kay Ate Joy Lim. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, so pasensya na mga kasama. Nag-overtime po tayo kasi uh, na-delay din po yung pagsimula natin. But before we proceed, this, uh, we, I would like to call on our last speaker who will give us her uh, inspirational message. Siya po yung pinakabata sa atin lahat. Siya po yung pinaka pinaka maraming experience sa ating lahat bata pa no bata pa pero marami ng experience at saka very loyal po sa ating organization may I call on our uh, very supportive very committed and dedicated national treasurer sister Nena Manaay Tita Nena you may have the floor. Yeah, please ask, please unmute yourself. Okay na? Can you hear oh. me? Yes, okay na, okay na. Okay na, sige. Oh, thank you for giving me giving me the chance. At least I join man ako sa inyong uh, discussion about uh, this uh, webinar on basic trade union leadership and the role of women. Tamagid ako with pinakabata. I'm already 73. I am already retired. Nag-retire na ako sa Sugar Industry Foundation. Nag I work I worked for the Sugar Industry Foundation mga 30 years. And during those years, damo gid oh, we have so many projects involving women and uh, most of these projects were uh uh, we are initiated or were uh, under the leadership of our Nakusip and Pasibu. So I was so involved in those projects like our dressmaking, dressmaking for women, my mga, my mga pagkahi isang mga um, how to, how to make, uh, it used to be like baby's dresses, tapos mga maong for our men also. So, so many projects. Tapos, and during also, while I was at CFI, we have projects also for women women only that uh, during the six months, uh, uh, lean, lean months, some sugar, we also uh, initiate, uh, give projects also to women also. So, those were my activities before. But now, since I'm already retired, hindi na ako masyado in. Old. Although I'm still with Nakusip and Pasibo as the national treasurer. So I'm just in the background and helping uh, Brother Roland and uh, Sister Emily kung ano man ang mga, mga what we can do for our uh, organizing and uh, expanding our uh, trade union movement. So I hope I can also join every now and then I can join your uh, your uh, training, mga webinar ninyo, I'm willing to, to join you. Okay, so and thank you so much to those leaders. I also want to, to enjoy our uh, male, uh, ang aton mga male na mga uh, officers sa labor, sa, aton, sa mga local, to give also our women the chance to initiate and uh, 
run our, their own projects with their with the help of our locals. It used to be before we start a project, expecting that the local will take over and go on with the projects that can help our women, and also to also to you, you know to also help the income income uh, household income the family income. They, their husbands are just working in the field as sakada and what what not no. But uh, na notice ko lang all these years na pag may projects, do wala na after that ang mga aton mga women, um, men na uh, officers and leaders sa labor. After that, ginapabayaan na lang nila. So sayang, sayang yung mga projects that were not continued. I don't know if some of you noticed that also. But I think that is what that is what I noticed when I was working with CP and also my involvement with the with the unions. So I hope na now na tapos na rin ang ano ang pandemic. Na we are back to our uh, no, normal uh, schedules, normal uh, work. I hope that our men will also uh, wake up and also help our women in uh, in uh, involving them in all their activities. Okay, thank you very much and congratulations to everyone who joined this webinar. Thank you, Brother Roland. Thank you, Tita Nena. Thank you very much. Isang bagsak po para kay Tita Nena. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Tita. Thanks, Emily. <laughs> okay, so dito na po tayo sa at sa pinakakihintay ng lahat yung closing remarks. <laughs> so, tinatawag ko po si Brother Benji De La Cruz, CIO National President, to give us uh, uh, the closing remarks for this afternoon's and today's uh, activity. Brother Benji? Okay, uh, Brother Roland, and to the rest of the participants, good afternoon. And uh, once again, uh, thank you for joining this uh, uh, our uh, webinar, uh, in particular, sa mga ladies and uh, female uh, participants natin. No, this is, uh, sabi nga ni eh, Sister Emily, uh, this is the right time. And for past uh, many years, ang ating na mga union, especially our federation, din ako si CIO and the PASIWO and the rest of the uh, National Federation uh, joining us uh, right now is uh, advocating no, for the rights of the women. And uh, tingnan nyo nga yung t-shirt ko is uh, women na women. Eh, no? But nonetheless, thank you also for our uh, uh, resource speakers no, who share their uh, knowledge, their uh, experiences. No? And uh, as we... Uh, journey uh, sa mga trabaho natin uh, we will uh, keep no uh, on our minds and on our uh, uh, officership yung karapatan ng mga kababayan maraming beses na rin na nagka-campaign tayo na dapat yung mga female uh, uh, members natin is encourage natin to join our union and uh, uh, lastly, uh, itong pandemic give us a uh, great example. No? Uh, halos uh, na mga cases, halos na mga concerns ay talaga affected yung mga kababayhan natin. So to all of us, uh, uh, please encourage our uh, female members to join actively, participate actively sa union natin o sa uh, uh, ma sa community natin so uh, sa lahat uh, thank you uh, once again and uh, stay safe and uh, congratulations sa uh, ating participation today despite na medyo na overshoot natin yung uh, time alatin natin so thank you uh, again uh, thank you brother Roland Thank you, Brother Benji. So sa lahat po ng participants, uh, maraming maraming salamat po sa inyo. At uh, hopefully sa sunod po nating uh, uh, cell program, Continuing Education for Labor Leaders, uh, second quarter, most likely on June, ay uh, 
sasama po kayo ulit sa atin. Maraming salamat and mabuhay ang manggagawang kababaihan sa Pilipinas. Maraming salamat po. Bye. Thank you. Thank you everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Ingat, ingat po. Thank you. Okay, bye-bye. Thank you, Miss Joe.